Hello and welcome to Firewall Management 201. I'm Professor Wool and today we're going to be talking about the challenges of discovering the connectivity needs of your business applications. So we've spent some of the previous classes on looking at the benefits that could be gained from identifying and knowing the connectivity requirements of various business applications and what you can do if you have that information. What we're going to talk about today is how you would jumpstart the process and actually discover what the requirements, what the connectivity requirements of each application are. Now that might not be so simple. It really depends on what sort of level of record keeping you have at your organization. Some organizations are very well organized and they have um, good record keeping, so they have some machine readable format where the applications are listed and for each application there is a list of all the flows of traffic that that application depends on perhaps as an Excel spreadsheet or as a as a SharePoint system if you are if you belong to one of these organizations then you're in good shape and it's easy enough to uh, use that if you're slightly less or well organized then perhaps you've you, you've been using the firewall rules as a mechanism to document what the applications really require. So remember, the f each traffic flow that goes through your system is probably supported by one or more firewall rules on the various firewalls in your state. And perhaps you've, you have a process whereby you use functionalities on the firewalls to document which applications the rule supports. And how you do it, it really depends on what sort of firewalls you have. For instance, if you have checkpoint firewalls, checkpoint firewalls have this concept of section headers. Uh, and many organizations are in the habit of placing a section header with the name of the application. And then below that, uh, all the firewall rules that support all the flows for that application's traffic. So if you have a checkpoint firewall and are in the habit of using these uh, section headers in this way, it's fairly straightforward to identify what the traffic that the application requires is. If you don't have a checkpoint but you have, let's say, a Juniper firewall, you could do a similar type of documentation but using the name column. So <clears throat> many firewalls allow you to include a name uh, for each of the rules and if you are in the in the habit of documenting the applications in the name column you can rely on that information if not you could also have a process whereby you place the application names in the comments pretty much every firewall out there has comments or remarks or description columns and if you are diligent about using the same name or the same word to describe the applications, you could place that in the comment fields and then find all the rules that have a particular name in the comment field. What about the rest of us that do not have good record keeping and do, are not in the habit of documenting the names of the applications in various formatted fields in the rules? Well, for such organizations, we can offer a, an iterative detection process. And the way this works is you start with some known fact. For instance, perhaps you've identified that there is the IP address of one of the servers that is involved in the application. If you know that one fact, you can start exploring. For instance, you can discover from that IP address, you can discover the name of an object that defines that IP address. If you know the name of the object, now you can go back to your firewall rules and search for all the rules that refer to that object or to that IP address. And maybe you'll discover this rule and this rule. And so if you've learned that <coughs> this, this, this uh, server connects to other servers, and you've learned that these two rules belong to that application. And you've learned another piece of information. You've actually identified two new servers 
that have something to do with the server you started with. So perhaps they are also part of the systems that support the application you're exploring. So if you've learned the identity of additional servers, now you can go back and explore the firewall rules for those objects and see what other rules refer to those objects. And perhaps you discover some other rule somewhere else that has yet another system with a different IP address that communicates with one or two of these servers. If you identify that, you can deduce that this server that you've just discovered is also part of the flows that the application at hand depends on. And so you can continue this, this process of searching, filtering out irrelevant results, expanding your search to additional servers uh, based on what you've discovered. And you can go through a few of these cycles until you've come into, uh, into the possession of the knowledge of all the systems that a particular application relies on. And you can document that and move on to the next application. So we've outlined basically three ways of learning what the connectivity requirements are. Either you've been careful about your record keeping, or you've used functionalities in the firewalls to document on a rule by rule basis which applications that rule supports, or you could use a uh, search and discover process to find out what you need to know. Thank you for your attention, and see you in the next class.